If you've been watching the channel, you'd know that recently I've purchased a compressor. And in my YouTube research before I bought it, everyone's talking about how noisy they are and how you have to buy a silenced one. And mine's no different. It's 97 decibels, which is blimmin' noisy. But I have a solution, so I don't care. Oh, <laughs> and it's not these. Many years ago, I had a really good compressor set up with a basic nail gun like this that just worked really well. And all these years later, I want to get back to that point. So as well as the compressor, I bought a nail gun and I bought an extending hose as well, which if I put near the door, will not only cover the whole of the workshop, but I can actually take it outside and use it to pump up the tires for the cars and, and all of that as well. But that's not what this video is about. The video is about how noisy compressors are and what I'm going to do with this one. And they are noisy, especially something like this. It's 97 decibels. When that kicks in, you should be wearing ear protection and it's uncomfortable if it's in the environment you're in. But I remember seeing a video many years ago from Keith from Rag and Bone Brown, where he actually put the compressor on a little extension to his shed outside that not only got it out of the shed, but also cut down on the noise because it was essentially outside the building. So I was thinking, I need to do something like that, but I don't actually need to build an extension to my workshop because I found somewhere even better ready-made, and that's up there. Yes, up here in the loft area above my workshop. You see, I've got plenty of room up here and it's really well ventilated. When I boarded it all out, I made sure that I kept the ventilation all the way around the roof so it's got plenty of air in here and a bit of road noise, but I'm sure the compressor won't worry about that. Just below me here is the main entrance to the workshop. The doorway is just down here. And I was thinking of having the pipes running to the left of it. That means that the extension reel is just to the left next to the door so I can take it out for the car tires. So really the best situation is the compressor around about here. So I think I need three things. I need power to power the compressor. I need to sort out the piping to get the compressed air from here downstairs where I want it. And I think I also need a tray that the compressor sits on that is also like an anti-vibration tray because it might be quieter up here, but if it sits on this floor, it's just going to vibrate the whole thing and it's probably going to move around and end up falling over and what have you as well. So out of those three things, I think the tray is the easiest out of the three. So that's what I'm going to start with. I have a lot of offcuts and bits of free sheet material and MDF in the workshop, so no need to buy any new timber for the tray, I think. I cut a piece of OSB to roughly the right size. This just needs to be big enough for it to sit on. Then mark out and cut some very bent MDF to fix around the perimeter. I'll fix this so it stands proud up and down from the MDF, so it will contain the compressor on the top and some packing foam that I've kept from a previous delivery underneath, so no part of the timber is actually touching the ground. This also gives me a chance to play with my new nail gun, which just helps hold the MDF in place while the glue cures. As well as holding the compressor and cutting down on vibration, it will also help to catch any oil drips, which I found the compressor tends to produce every now and again.
With the tray made, my next job is to get the compressor up into the loft. So I use some of my trusty blue rope that I've had for years to make a type of sling to hold the front and the back of the compressor. But I do need to remove the ladder to make room in the loft hatch to pull it up, which is not an easy task from above. All I need to do now is get down. Which could be easier said than done. No, 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 no. Oh my god, that's the wrong way. So I eventually managed to get down. Anyway, moving on to this pipe work. And I need to do a little bit of a sketch. Just bear with me for a second. So this is what I've got. I've got my upstairs floor, it's a little bit thicker than that, and my compressor, and downstairs I've got my main door, and I'm going to have an air regulator and the hose wheel that has the hose coming out, which will give me the compressed air. And these will connect together with the fittings that come with it. So that's not a problem. So I need to essentially get from an output from the compressor to the input of this air regulator thing. Now, originally, what I was thinking about was to put in some pressure pipe work. And you can actually get plastic pipe work that's pressure rated, that has quick connectors as well, so it's really easy to put in. And it's quite affordable. So what I was looking at was just putting a pipe between the two, which isn't that expensive, because these pipes are only about six pounds, so that's not particularly expensive. But then I worked out the fitting that comes off the pipe at the end is a little bit more expensive. That's £12 for the special fitting that comes off at each end. Then I need a bend and some sort of reducer at the bottom, which is another £4 and £3. And then at the top I need some sort of reducer, which I think is the £4. So before I know it, this whole setup, just to essentially get from just above the ceiling down to waist height, is, just bear with me for a second, 12, 24. So I'm not gonna get much change out of 45 pounds, which I think is quite a lot of money just to go maybe a meter and a half through the ceiling. So I thought, there must be a cheaper way of doing this. So get rid of that. Let's start again. So plan B. And I thought, I've already got the compressor, and I've also got a hose on the compressor that's also got a quick coupling like this. So rather than actually piping it into a pipe, the pipe coming through the ceiling and then bringing it out the pipe, all I really need is a conduit to get the hose that I already own downstairs. So as long as this conduit can accommodate the widest thing on that line, which is this quick fitting, then I can just feed the pipe that I've already owned onto the air regulator. So I had a quick look in my local DIY shop and came up with a bit of plastic waste pipe like this. You can get it in white or black. I chose the black. And this has got a 32 millimeter inside diameter. And this is the biggest section on my hose, which fits quite nicely. So rather than 50 pounds worth of set up and clips and pressure pipe. If I put a conduit in there, that I think cost me £3.50, plus a couple of clamps to hold it in place, which were £1.50. So for the huge cost of £5, I'll be able to get the hose through there and clipped on. So that's what I'm going to do. Installing this type of pipe is easy, although I had forgotten how messy it is dealing with plasterboard above your head on the ceiling.
I also fixed the pipe at the top in the loft without cutting the two meter length so I can adjust it for height later. I also need some electrical conduit so I can fit a switch to power the compressor from below. So I'll quickly set up my laser level just to make sure I put this in plumb. With the electrical conduit in place, I can feed through my cables and carry out all the terminations I need to do for the switch downstairs and for the socket upstairs. I also installed a light downstairs on the same circuit, which will tell me if the system is on or off. So before I wrap things up up here, let me just explain quickly the electrical side. Everything starts with a standard 13 amp plug in one of my sockets in the workshop. The cable then goes to the switch you just saw me put in, which is essentially an isolator and a fuse. It's a fuse switch, the sort of thing you'll find on a fridge or an oven in your kitchen. Then the power comes back up here to a Wago box, like a splitter box and splits into two different directions. One goes to the light downstairs, which tells me whether it's on or not, and will remind me if I've left it on. And the second one comes up to this socket here, which is just a standard 13 amp socket that the compressor is plugged into. The socket is on, the compressor is on. That means that everything else I can control from downstairs rather than having to come up here. There's just one thing left to do here. Because I've got a motor up here, then there is a higher risk of fire and what have you. So I've got a smoke detector, which will tell me just in case something goes wrong, I'm sure it won't, but at least if I mount a smoke detector up here, then if anything does go wrong, it'll go off and I should be able to hear it downstairs. Just in time for the installation, Amazon delivered the regulator stroke moisture filter thing, which I've mounted on a bit of half inch ply just so it's easier to screw to the wall. And this will enable me to adjust the pressure downstairs without ever having to go up to the loft to touch the compressor. So now I have full control over the whole system in the workshop from downstairs. I'm only firing these in the hope that the compressor kicks in so I can actually hear what it sounds like. It will do in a minute, it must do. Oh, there you go. Okay, so that's more like a low rumbling rather than a 97 decibel major thunder. It's not really, really quiet, but you definitely don't need hearing protection. Nice. That's better than it. 
That is better than it being in this room. Anyway, I'll have to play with that a little bit later. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you some thoughts on where you can put your compressor maybe in the future. I will see you next time.